Fournette. Fournette goes airborne. He's in. Touchdown, Jaguars. Tip and intercepted by Ramsey to close it out. It's over. The Jacksonville Jaguars have pulled off the upset of the playoffs. What is going on, everybody? It is Tree from Troop Talks here, here to preview the week number six matchup between the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Dallas Cowboys. And before we even start this video, I just want to say welcome, Cowboys fans. Welcome to my mentions. Welcome to my comment section, because I know there's going to be legions of you, especially at the live stream. So welcome and subscribe so you can be notified every time I drop a new video and join the Treebs tribe. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, this is a Treeb from BigJReport.com. This is the Jacksonville Jaguars versus Dallas Cowboys week number six preview. Now this week, I think the game plan is pretty straightforward offensively as well as defensively. We're going to break down both of them uh, in quick succession, but before I dive into it, I really think that beating the Cowboys, you need to do one thing really on defense and one thing really on offense. So, Again, Cowboys fans, welcome to my comments section. I'm talking shit. Here we go. All right, so the offense for the Jags offense, let's see Consistent Blake go out there. Consistent Blake has showed up every other week, and unfortunately for the Cowboys, this is one of the weeks Consistent Blake is supposed to show up. So let's hope he comes out there. Uh, seeing a thing today, Blake Bortles is currently 10th uh, in passing yards this season, so he needs to keep on being consistent and keep on... Uh, being that level of player we know he could be last week throwing four interceptions however a career high in passing yards but also a career high in pass attempts we cannot have Blake Bortles throw the ball 61 times part of the strength of this uh, Cowboys defense is their secondary I'd say their secondary and their linebackers shout out to Leighton Vander Esch Leighton Vander Esch is from Riggins Idaho played a man football uh, at Salmon River which is one of the high schools that I currently cover for the newspaper that I work with so shout out to Leighton Van Der Esch, I think that's insane that he's even in the NFL, let alone a first round pick, let alone a starter. So uh, shout out to that guy. That guy, uh, he better be making all the tackles because if he makes all the tackles, I don't think I'd be too mad. But Blake Bortles needs to be able to be consistent. He needs to be able to limit his passing attempts to maybe 30, 35. You know, it's been evident this year that we're not limiting Blake to 20, 25, which we should be. But, you know, 30, 35 attempts should be okay for Blake Bortles and to be able to get the ball to his receivers. Now another thing I'm excited for and I think a lot of Jags fans should be excited for and if you're not, you're crazy and you don't love the NFL, you don't love football, it's the first look at Jamal Charles in our offense. You're lying to yourself if you did not love Jamal Charles when he was in his prime. When Jamal Charles was in his prime, he was running dudes over and I understand. I understand that dude's not in his prime right now. But I still think he can go, and he's going to be able to be on the field a couple of times to see what he can really do. I hope, I hope he's playing. I'm knocking on wood. I haven't heard anything official if he is or if he's not playing. But you would imagine that since we brought him in so early in the week, our intentions are to play Jamal Charles, especially a veteran that, you know, basically knows how the NFL works. You'd think that he could kind of just pick up the playbook and learn as he goes. He's a veteran. Uh, he's been in the league for a while now. He's 31 years old, like I mentioned. I'm excited to see what he can do. You know, I think he took a whole year off. I'm not too positive, but, you know, he was a free agent for a long time. The Jags uh, picked him up due to injury to Corey Grant and Leonard Fournette. And I think that's going to be uh, a good piece to this offense, especially when Leonard Fournette uh, comes back healthy. I think he could be able to teach Leonard, you know, tips and tricks on how to be a successful back in this league for a long, long time, which is what Jamal Charles was. So... Again, all you Jags fans that are really pessimistic about Jamal Charles being here, like, ugh, he's 31, we should have traded for Le'Veon Bell. Just be lucky we still have money left. Just be lucky we still have money left. I'm excited to see Jamal Charles run the ball. I'm excited to see what he brings to this offense, and I'm really, really excited to see if he finds the end zone uh, this week against Dallas. Now, the same thing goes for TJ Yeldon. TJ Yeldon, who's had one of the best seasons uh, of any Jaguar this year. Uh, it's been quiet, no doubt about that. Not a lot of people have been talking about it, you know, as I fix my hood. Uh, not a lot, a whole lot of people, not a whole lot, not a whole lot of people uh, have been talking about TJ Yeldon, how well he has done this year. Uh, Stats-wise, he is the ninth in the league uh, in rushing yards. You know, he's really filled the void when Leonard Fournette has gone out. He's really stepped up and has played really, really good football. 
and I can I want to continue to see that. I think TJ Yeldon obviously will get the start this week with Jamal Charles coming in and out. And again, Jamal Charles, I think, is going to help TJ Yeldon uh, in his game. There's a lot of Jamal Charles in TJ Yeldon, a young, shifty back uh, that can make people miss and does a lot in the pass game as well, whether that be screens underneath routes, you know, things like that. Uh, a lot of Jamal Charles is in TJ Yeldon, so I think that this pickup was kind of you know, more leaning to help TJ Yeldon a little bit. And, you know, TJ Yeldon, again, is already having a fantastic year, like I said, ninth in the league in rushing yards and uh, has won three player, Offensive Player of the Week from Treb from Talks, which is the highest of honor that you could receive if you are a member of the Jacksonville Jaguar offense. So he has three of those to his name as well. And, you know, I think a big key to this game is running the ball. I think the run game is something that we really, really need to emphasize this week. Let's not make Blake pass the ball very much. Let's see TJ Yeldon, Jamal Charles, and Brandon. Or no, 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 no. Fuck, that, that Broncos run. We just got Broncos running back. I think Jamal Williams? Is his name Jamal too? Fact check that in the comments section down below. I think he'll play. Uh, Brandon Wilds will be either on back on the practice squad or cut or something like that. So now in the offense, <clears throat> when we do be, when we are going to be passing the ball, I want to see Keelan Cole get more involved. Um, you know, he's had that one big game against the Patriots, but other than that, Keelan Cole has just been kind of MIA. Uh, he was supposed to be the number one receiver heading into the season, at least what the fans thought. You know, uh, the front office and the coaching staff really thought that Dante Moncrief, as well as uh, Marquise Lee, were going to fill that. But, you know, I think it's kind, of, <laughs> it's kind of just showing how much the coaching staff uh, thinks of Keelan Cole. You know, they're not really trying to get him the ball that much. I want to see him get the ball this week. I'm going to be interested to see who uh, Byron Jones is going to be lining up against. Because uh, that kid is underrated. He's a good cornerback. Uh, whether he be on Westbrook, Moncrief, uh, or any of those guys. Let's see Keelan get involved. I want to see DJ Chark continue to make strides. You know, I want to see all these young receivers... Uh, continue to make strides and be able to when they catch the ball get the opportunity to do something with it because you know it might be their last probably not but you know it, it, that's just like what I'm saying is that like any week one of these wide receivers can go off and they got to make sure that this week it's their week now the offensive line which is the last thing we're going to be talking about uh, I was going to touch on the tight ends a little bit but I'm really not confident in James O'Shaughnessy or Niles Paul. I think we should have kept Ben Koyak. I think Ben Koyak is better than both of those guys. So I'm not even going to touch on that. Um, but we will be touching on the offensive line. Jeremy Parnell last week had an awful game. Josh Wells had an awful game. Josh Walker had an awful game as well. The Jags are currently working out Eric Flowers. So, you know, that kind of that kind of speaks volumes on how bad Josh Walker is. Like, I mean, Eric Flowers, man, he's so bad. He is so bad. Like, I mean, I don't really want the Jaguars to get him, but, you know, he he's not Josh Walker bad. So, I mean, maybe for the time being, he could be here and be like... But then, like I said on Twitter, it's kind of arguing over what shit stinks the least because, you know, they're, they're obviously both shit. So, you know, we just... We're kind of picking the lesser of two evils with that one, but we'll see what Eric Flowers does, what he decides to do, you know, what the... Uh, what the team decides to do as well. But this offensive line needs to protect Blake Bortles. That was a big thing last week. A lot of his interceptions. There's a lot of people in his face. Jeremy Parnell struggles. Let's not... Damn, but we're going to have to. You know, the thing is, is that uh, last week, uh, Darren Lee, yeah, from Kansas City, uh, who is their speed rusher, had to line up against Jeremy Parnell. And usually, usually the speed rusher is going to be going on uh, Cam Robinson's side. Because that's usually just how we do things, and Cam Robinson usually handles them soundly, but Jeremy Parnell struggled, you know, he struggled. And, like, Demarcus Lawrence as well, who I would not want Josh Walker to be blocking, but, you know, Jeremy Parnell is going to be blocking him. He's one of the best pass rushers in the league right now. Uh, he needs to do a good job protecting Blake and making sure that, you know, he's out of his face because that's going to be a big thing this week. Uh, and if you're Blake, you know, you don't stay in the pocket too long. If you need to run, run. Get out of the pocket. Make sure you do things and make sure you get a... Uh, first downs or much needed gains you know in this game now as far as the defense goes i think this is where the game is going to be won because this dallas offense is really really bad especially uh just with dak prescott and the wide receivers you know they're all not on the same page like you've seen this week alan hearns was complaining about dak prescott's play and he played for the jags for four years never once did he complain about blake bortles cowboys fans that are going to be in my mentions just sit there and think about that just sit there and think about that. 
guys kicked Tony Romo out to get Dak Prescott, and Dak Prescott got bitched at, and Blake Bortles did it. It's a, it's, a, it's a hard pill to swallow, I'd understand, but this Jaguar defense is going to have to step up and do its thing, which I think it will, it does every week, um, and I think that that's what's going to come down to. The matchup that everybody wants to see, at least I think, and it's what I want to see, Dallas obviously has a great offensive line. Whenever you say, even think about saying great offensive line, you're just going to say, oh, they're like the Cowboys line, or they're like the Cowboys line. First, really look at this defensive line against the Dallas Cowboys offensive line. I think this is going to be a battle in the trenches, and I'm really excited to see this matchup and really go back and look at the film and uh, see how well this defensive line does against this offensive line. Uh, it's going to be a great matchup with uh, Molly Jackson, Zach Martin, you know, everybody everybody that's on this offensive line that just plays terrific, terrific football. I know there are some injuries on this Dallas offensive line, but, you know, even when there's a guy that seems like he goes down, you know, someone steps up on that offensive line. That offensive line is tremendous. It's been one of the best in football for years and years. And he knows the Jaguar defensive line has just recently been on the come up. And it's going to be a good matchup. It's going to be one in the trenches. I'm excited to see, which is a thing that, <clears throat> which the trenches is something that we need to win because the biggest thing we need to stop is the run game. You know, that's our weaknesses. That's our weakness as a defense. Um, we are eighth or ninth in rushing defense which is pretty good. That's a top 10, but you know, with us being ranked first in about every other category, that's our weakest spot. And that's what we need to do is we need to put a big emphasis on the run game, send a lot of run blitzes, you know, have Telvin Smith really plug out the hole as well as Miles Jack. Uh, let's put Barry Church in the box. Barry Church does well in the box. Uh, Ronnie Harrison as well. He's a hard hitter. I'd like to see what he could do as well. And, you know, we got to put a big emphasis on the run game because Ezekiel Elliott cannot have a big game against us. Kareem Hunt didn't do too well against us uh, last week uh, when we played the Chiefs, and he's a good running back. But Ezekiel Elliott's one of the elite running backs in the NFL, and that's going to be the big thing that the Jags have to stop is Ezekiel Elliott. Ezekiel Elliott is the biggest weapon on this Dallas Cowboys offense. And like I said, it's going to be one in the trenches between this offensive line and this defensive line. And we need to see uh, what's going to give. Because if this offensive line manages to open up holes for Ezekiel Elliott, we're in trouble. Uh, I'm not worried. <clears throat> I'm not worried about Dak Prescott dropping back and throwing because uh, let's transition into that. So the secondary is going to do what they need to do. I'm not worried about it. I think, like, Dak, if he's going to throw the ball, it's going to be underneath. Like, that's what, like, I guarantee you Dak Prescott isn't going to throw a ball more than 10 yards. Or he's not going to complete a pass more than 10 yards. He might not even throw a pass more than 10 yards because he'll be straight scared. This is the best secondary Dak Prescott's ever faced in his career. And it's going to be, uh... It's going to be scary for the young lad because, you know, he's not going to be wanting to take shots. He's one of the worst quarterbacks in the NFL. Cowboys fans, welcome to my mentions. Um, and, yeah, so, you know, that this secondary is going to step up big time against Dak Prescott. Uh, I hope that there is a turnover. Hopefully, knock on some wood, Jalen Ramsey finally gets his first interception of the year. And, uh, you know, Dak Prescott's the one to throw it, and he's the one that actually wants to test uh, Jalen Ramsey. But like I said, I think if our offense manages to go out there and uh, do its job, I mean our defense, if our defense goes out there against his offense, it does its job, then I really have no, no worries. And then if our offense goes out there, puts up 10, 13 points, I think we win the game. That's as simple as that. I think this is this is the game we can't overthink. We need to go out there, do our job. It's gonna it's exactly like the Giants game. You know what I'm saying? We gotta put up like 20 points, and you know hold them to like 10, 10, 7 points, and we will be able to win. I don't expect this to be a high scoring game. I expect it to be pretty low scoring, like a 23 to 10 kind of game. And uh, hopefully the Jags come out on top, which I'm thinking they will. And yeah, that was my preview of the Jaguars in Cowboys match. And that was my Jaguars versus Cowboys week number six preview. What do you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget to check the links down below as well. Don't forget to like me on Facebook at Trey Talks. Follow me on Twitter at Trevor Pixley and follow me on Instagram at Trayvon Pixley. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon. Become a part of Trey's tribe. Today I put out six videos a week. Ain't nobody outworking me. Them's are straight facts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, you guys have a terrific day.